Hi everyone, I'm Meredith. And listen, I'm just a girl stuck in my apartment looking for someone to talk to. So I found some people. My guest today is Amiri Shock. He's the regional operator at the Veggie Grill in the Flatiron neighborhood of New York City. We're talking about how the restaurant is continuing to adapt since both outdoor and indoor dining began some months ago and how they're surviving when their initial customer base, which is the Lunch Rush business crowd, still mostly remains at home. Now, before Amir and I get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Let's Talk About It YouTube channel. You'll get alerts to when new episodes come out, and this way you won't miss a thing. So go ahead, like, and subscribe. Amir and I will wait. Did you do it? Great. Amir, welcome. Let's talk about it. Thanks, Meredith. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Restaurant life. Not an easy one right now, I assume. <laughs> It never was. It was definitely a lot harder now. It never was. That's a, that's definitely a, a fair point. Indoor dining began uh, end of September. Yep, September thirtieth. Uh, changes been like you know. Obviously, we went back in March from a complete yep. shutdown uh, and only takeout and delivery orders in a restaurant uh, to outdoor dining beginning in July, if I'm, if I recall, yeah, and now July. we have um, indoor dining. So what is, how are things going and what has this entire process been like? I think it's just been uh, it, it definitely interesting, something different, something new in for everybody. So there's, there's no roadmap for this, unfortunately, you know, uh, it, it's a, it's a learning process for everyone. Uh, you know, we, we, we had, we had closed down our restaurant for the safety of our team for about two, three months when the, yeah. the height of the pandemic, yeah, it, it just wasn't worth for us risking our team members' lives or, you know, their, their health, having to travel on public transportation to get into, into the city. So we reopened back in June and then, you know, then we were allowed to do outdoor dining, which was uh, phenomenal. That was definitely a huge help, especially for people that live in the city, right? The city is definitely very quiet. You know, almost 99% of the offices are still closed. Uh, so it was a way for people that live in the city to get out of their apartments and their homes to actually, you know, go eat outside. <laughs> so they can they need a place to sit and be able to, you know, enjoy the outdoors. And the weather, for the most part, cooperated. You know, there was definitely some days that were just really humid. So you don't want to be outside, but I think people would rather deal with that than be stuck in their apartments. So that the outdoor dining was definitely a big help. Uh, and then, uh, like as, you, as you stated, we reopened in the uh, end of September for indoor dining with about 25% capacity. For us, it was about 13 seats, uh, you know, going from 50 down to 13. So it's, it's better than nothing, but I think it was a slow start. <laughs> you know, first couple of weeks, I think we had one or two people that sat inside. I mean, they were still a little apprehensive about dining inside, especially when the weather was nice. So they were able to enjoy the outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. And over the last few weeks, as the weather has changed and started getting colder, uh, you know, we've definitely seen a lot more. I think the most people are completely fine. Uh, they don't, they don't mind it. They don't, uh, you know, we you know, socially distance our tables. Uh, we sanitize, every, you know, every, as soon as a guest leaves, we sanitize uh, the tables, the chairs, everything. Uh, every 30 minutes, we sanitize almost the entire restaurant with our door handles, our kiosks, our computers, our bathrooms. So, you know, we've got a lot of uh, processes in place to make guests feel safe and make, and have a safe environment. Where is your home base located? Well, we are based out of California. So our, our home office is in Culver City, uh, California. And, and that's the majority of our restaurants are in Southern California or up and down the coast. And then this was our first New York location. And we had also opened Boston last year in October. And we opened New York in December of last year. Oh, wow. So, oh my gosh, so three months. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. And where in the city are you guys? We're, we're on uh, in the Flatiron area, so we're on the 23rd between 5th and 6th. So clientele normally would be extremely business-based, people yeah. going, uh, grabbing yeah, lunch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, huge, huge lunch business, uh, especially you know, with, with all the offices within walking distance uh, for, within our location. We have Union Square Park, uh, a lot of tourist base also. Uh, you know, especially in, uh, when we open in the holiday time, we have a lot of, we have a lot of European tourists that were here. Uh, we obviously visiting the city and here for the New Year's Eve and the Christmas tree. So that was a huge, uh, huge help. And a decent amount of residential buildings, uh, especially in the evenings. 
Um, unfortunately, most of those people that have second homes or have parents that live outside of the, in, in the suburbs, they, they left, <laughs> they, you know, they went up upstate or they went to Connecticut or New Jersey, uh, you know, to get out of the, get out of the city. So a lot of those people are still not back yet. Well, I don't think tourism has really returned to the city, but now, as there's been some uh, stages of reopening already, are you seeing more uh, business clientele return, people going back to the offices in the area? There's uh, very few. I think there, most, most companies have kind of I think, decided not to really reopen their office fully until next year. Uh, some have reopened on a voluntary basis. Uh, so those people, there's a few people that come in usually maybe once or twice a week. So usually midweek is a little bit busier than beginning and the end of the week. Uh, and also, uh, I think schools have a big, uh, big part of it. it as a lot of schools got delayed or schools have to close because of uh, an outbreak. Uh, those parents have to stay home with the children. So they, you know, they were less likely to come into the city. Absolutely. So while the restaurant was closed back in March, can you speak to how the company as a whole was affected and how they were able to keep the lights on, if you will? Uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, we, we, you know, we've been kind of dipping into our savings, if you will, and, you know, trying to do the best we can uh, across, across the country with, with all the locations that we have. Uh, you know, luckily, uh, some of the suburban areas would look that, that okay. Uh, but, you know, overall, you know, we've been down you know, overnight, essentially down 80, 90% of the company. And then slowly having to crawl back from that. Uh, you know, we're in the, we have great investors that, have, that believe in the brand. We believe in the brand. And we're committed to, you know, growing this, uh, this business. You know, you know, we craft food that's good for our lives and our future. So we're really here about making sure that we can provide uh, you know, a, a service and, and, and an avenue for people to enjoy plant-based dining uh, without having to kind of give up flavor and taste and continue, you know, kind of keep employing our team members and have a future for, uh, for, for them as well as for the, for the world overall. So it sounds like, I mean, we all probably should have been eating a lot more veggie girl during the, uh, the shutdown of quarantine because for anyone who put on the quarantine 15, Perhaps, <laughs> you know, we should have been ordering more from you, but yeah. you have such healthy food. Have you noticed, though, any types of, like, new food and ordering trends that people preferred during, uh, have started to prefer during the shutdowns and quarantines? Like, usually, it began with just everything fried or yeah foods that we just shouldn't have been eating as constantly <laughs> as they were. Too much baking in my house for a Yeah, while. absolutely. I think that, that <laughs> definitely a lot of baking happened, a lot of fried foods happened, a lot of comfort food happened, right? The pizzas and the and, and, and the burgers and the fries and all that. I think that that was kind of you know, comforting to kind of makes you feel better. Uh, I think a lot of people definitely had that. And that's the nice thing about our menu. We have a wider range of menu depending on where you are in your journey and what, what kind of food you're looking to eat. So we have we have the burgers and fries, but we also have you know, plant-based whole food uh, and menu items with you know, grains and rice and veggies uh, and, and plant-based proteins that are really, really good for your low calories, high protein items. So definitely, you know, so we, we had a kind of nice wide range of that. So, uh, and we actually, when we reopened in June, we relaunched our whole menu. Mm. So we made it, we made it uh, more accessible. Uh, we lowered our prices and then made it kind of a, uh, an easier way to, hey, you know, this is where I am on my journey, or, you know, I've been eating for the last three months this way, I, I can't do this anymore, you know, I'm feeling it on my health, I'm feeling it on my, on my pant sizes, <laughs> you know, so whatever it may be, so we kind of have a nice range of depending what, what journey people are on and what they're looking to do, that they can actually find something on the menu, and, you know, they, if they have a carnivore in the family that just has to have their burger and fries, we have that for them also. Did you notice any, though, trending of what your customers wanted in June? Did it start with, you know, very healthy people were maybe trying to take off some pounds, but now as there are more stresses in the world, people and the holidays are getting closer. Absolutely. More fries, <laughs> more burgers. More yeah, I think fries. people are going to the comfort, right? Comfort food of, you know, childhood or, you know, like we added on a tuna melt, which is phenomenal. 100% plant-based tuna melt with cheese and tomatoes and pickles on a rye bread that people are just dying for. We have an amazing Reuben that we've added on to our sandwich, a, a, a dill uh, sauerkraut uh, that, you know, once again, it takes a long time to prep that sauerkraut. 
so people aren't willing to do that at home. So it's like, hey, let me go get that. And then the same thing with the comfort foods, uh, you know, with, with the Beyond uh, Beauty Plus work with the Beyond patties or, uh, you know, uh, fried cauliflower. Then they still want to set them the fried stuff, but it's cauliflower. So it's a little bit better. <laughs> than... <laughs> exactly. And then you get the buffalo sauce with that. It's amazing. So I think it's really about the comfort food, but also stuff that it's not easy to make at home. Yeah. So they're looking for something that's actually, hey, you know, I, I can't do that. And they're, they're done with cooking. They've done all the, you know, the food shows and the, and the you know, the Zoom uh, cooking classes. And, you know, it's like you can only do so much of that and you have so much stuff in, uh, in your pantry that they want to, hey, you know, this is easier. The food is really good. Let me go, let me have the veggie girl make it for me instead. Yeah, New Yorkers love to eat out. And as yeah. outdoor dining began back in the summer and indoor dining, has now advanced to that stage. I noticed the really creative and unique outdoor setups yeah. and how they evolved. What has your process been? I mean, some of these setups now look like full, uh, yeah. you know, fully equipped dining rooms. And it almost, you, you, you see them and you wonder, is this indoor dining? <laughs> <laughs> like where has this been this whole time, right? right. It, you know, it looks phenomenal. Some restaurants have done a, a phenomenal job, and especially I think full service restaurants kind of had to do that. You know, they it, it's not easy to take a hundred dollar meal home <laughs> and or have it delivered to where you want to have the experience and have a, have a place to sit and enjoy that. So I think a lot of a lot of those places you know end up doing a really nice job. Maybe you know we added a, a we originally added some. Uh, uh, patio dining or sidewalk dining like yeah you know the dining will be open you know we don't need to add the expense of going into the streets and stuff and it, that uh, the dining, indoor dining kept on getting delayed so we actually ended up you know building a nice little uh, outdoor uh, patio on our street which is nice and beautiful green it has like green colors in there you can see it a mile away it's, it's so really nice yeah it's amazing you're right across from the, uh, uh, the Flatiron building in Madison Square Park and that's, that's been another positive for us, that people can grab food and go into the Madison Square Park and hang out in the park and enjoy the meal there, too, which is really nice. But yeah, it's, it's, I think, and you know, now that the outdoor dining has been extended indefinitely, so we're actually adding more, more flair to it, if you will, to make it obviously uh, feasible for, for the cold weather, but also make it a little more stand out and to some, semi-permanent to what we can do to uh, make, still feel, uh, make people feel comfortable because you know, people are still kind of a little apprehensive of wanting to sit inside and who else is there, you know, six feet to six feet, but you're still kind of walking by, you know, someone else that may be eating and they don't have their mask on. Uh, so it's really about making sure, making people feel comfortable and safe uh, as they come into the restaurant. What do those additions look like? Are they everything from heat lamps to holiday decor? Yep, absolutely, yeah. So we're, we're looking at some heat lamps, uh, kind of putting a tent over the little place that we created. So it's a shield from the... Uh, from the elements, uh, adding some lighting uh, outside so it feels nice and comfortable and inviting. We added some uh, uh, little candles, you know, a battery uh, rechargeable candles on the table. So it gives you some little, enough light, so you, but you're not blinded, especially at night. You know, you don't, uh, you want to kind of add the ambient light. Um, so, uh, you know, definitely some, some plants and flowers. But, uh, you know, I was actually uh, observing the flowers we planted back in June are still actually thriving really well. <laughs> and actually growing, which looks, which is amazing. So we have some really nice colored flowers out there. Uh, we have some uh, sage and stuff in there. We're adding some uh, uh, seasonal uh, produce out there, like, or uh, mints and uh, stuff like that. Just kind of it stays well, but also makes it look like a restaurant and feel like a restaurant. It's like setting up an entirely new restaurant. Yeah, absolutely. And during it, doing it. Excuse me, during a pandemic, which I yeah. certainly I would imagine is is challenging, but. You, did you also like have to deal with competition from all the other restaurants having to figure out where do I get my new outdoor patio set up? How do I get the plexiglass and who's going to build this for me? Yeah, I know. Absolutely. And it, it's definitely, it, it's difficult because, you know, restaurants are already down, the sales are already down and, uh, or we, and we were close. So we weren't making any money. I still have to pay rent and pay some labor. Uh, and so, you know, it was adding another expense on top of not having money coming in. So it was definitely, it was an investment that uh, it originally was a short-term investment because it was only, uh, you know, original plan was only until end of October. But now that it's been extended, so we're actually, people are adding more money into it because now right. it is indefinite and it's, it's kind of the way of life, unfortunately, uh, for the foreseeable future. And the city was definitely helpful in allowing that because it, before it was a permit process and a lot of fees involved in, in uh, getting outdoor dining and all that, but you know, 
uh, uh, we're also very fortunate. We have a long storefront, so that gives us a good amount of space to put some tables. And uh, you know, there are some restaurants that have a small storefront. Uh, it's hard to put tables up. You know, they can only have maybe one or two tables, so sometimes it's almost not worth it, or you know, or you don't get as much turnover on that. So you know, we were very fortunate to have a long storefront and get into the street parking also, uh, and you know, take over that. You know, it's definitely as as the city reopens and people more drive in, it's going to be interesting because wow. you know, there's a lot of streets that are not available <laughs> where people used to park. Uh, but you know, it's because it, it, it is kind of the way of life, and it is definitely great. I think it makes the city even more. You know, New York's always been a you know a foodie town, and I think this makes it even more fun. Uh, and obviously, we need more people to come back into the city, <laughs> which makes the restaurants thrive, survive. Uh, you know, there's it, there's definitely a lot of choices for the residents that do live in the city, uh, so they you know definitely have opportunity to go in a lot of different places. Uh, and there's less competition instead for or le less competition for seats, right? Before you had to make reservations at some of these restaurants for months at a, uh, months in advance. Now, uh, you know, there's not many people coming in. There's not tourists coming in. Less people going out to celebrate those special events. Uh, so definitely, so there's there's a lot of that change. Sure, sure. When you look back over this time since March, what have been some of the biggest challenges for the rest? Uh, and the restaurants is you know obviously sales that is it's a you know restaurants operate on very thin margins uh especially in new york city because the rents are extremely high and definitely a lot of competition a lot of other restaurants you know you know there's eight nine restaurants next right next to each other essentially uh but so they we all rely on the office crowds right so there's you know hundreds and thousands of people that you know come into the city from the outer boroughs from new jersey from connecticut every day monday through friday uh, uh, to go to work, so they all have to eat somewhere. So that that's always that's been the biggest challenge of getting having people uh, come in. I know we're, like I said, we we've been very fortunate. We have a lot of uh, uh, lucky uh, or you know, loyal guests that come back and support us. And there's people that do that are plant based eaters or vegans that come in from the outer boroughs and just to support Veggie Grill, uh, which is uh, phenomenal. But there's only so many of those people, unfortunately. Where you know when you have thousands of people that walk by, you know, on, on 23rd uh, every day before this all happened, you know that that's a big hurt. You know, it hurts our team members. We still haven't brought all of our team members back. Uh, you know, we've brought about, probably by 33 percent of our team members back so far. And we have the other one, the other one still on uh, you know, standby. As soon as we, you know, as sales go up, we keep adding more people back onto our team uh, to continue making, you know, make sure that they're obviously safe as they come into the city, but also. You know, they they're able to provide for their families, and that's you know that's always our big as as a company. You know, we're about people. We're in the people business. You know, we serve amazing food, but we're in the people business. Whether it's our team members or our guests, that, that's what's important to us. What do you need from outside resources, government support, if you will, to keep going and keep growing and adapting through this time? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just we need we need the business communities who can realize that we need to get our people back into work right? we need people uh, traveling we need people uh, you know creating back into their offices and opening up the offices obviously safely and make sure keeping everyone safety in mind and you know mask up <laughs> you know is, is it, you know mask definitely help you know is it 100 percent? who knows and that's a different <laughs> different set of you know politics in that aspect of it but it's definitely you know there's definitely you know, less restrictions and i think the city and uh, new york definitely i think have been very helpful, especially with the outdoor dining and uh, uh, kind of helping cut through some of the red tape, if you will, and making things happen faster, mm -hmm. uh, which has been helpful. But I think until there's uh, more traffic into the city, you know, there's only so much you can do with having outdoor dining and having all these other things. But until there's people served, you know, that that that's the hard part. And obviously working with landlords and being able to reduce those rents and, uh, you know, deferments don't really help, <laughs> you know, pay me rent next year. But like, if you're not making money now, then we have to do three times the sales in the future yeah. to make up for the difference. So that doesn't really help. So, you know, whether well, there's a stimulus package to help pay rent. And I'm sure land, you know, landlords have their expenses. They got to pay their mortgages or taxes and all that too. So it's how do you kind of work what, together to make sure everyone is supported and taken care of. What have you learned over this experience that you'll take uh, with you? I think people are resilient, you know, it's, you know, they, with everything going on, I'm really impressed with our team members every single day. Uh, they come in, they're happy, they're excited to come to work and, uh, and, and serve the food that we serve. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, ironically, you're taking your life in your hands, getting on the train or the bus every day in a way, but, you know, they're all doing an amazing job. You know, they're very resilient and they want to do this and they want to be here and they, you know, they're excited, they get excited when we get busy. 
uh, excited as they see a lot of the regular guests and get to know them and have a, have a good conversation with them. Uh, and, you know, it operating in a different, uh, you know, being very adaptable right? so with, with, with everything changing in the city and changing every, in everywhere, uh, the, you know, different laws that change on sometimes on a weekly and a daily basis. And they've been very resilient into uh, adapting to those and making, hey, what do we need to do to make us survive? We'll do it. Well, that's so inspiring, Amir. I really, uh, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm basically hungry and starving now. And I got to wrap this up because my pantry is calling me. <laughs> well, you need to come into Veggie Girl so you don't have to worry about cooking. <laughs> okay, okay, deal. I'm on my way. Either way, <laughs> got to wrap it up so I can eat. <laughs> Uh, Amir, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate uh, talking. And for everyone that's hungry, go into Veggie Grill. But for now, this has been Let's Talk About It. We'll talk to you next time.